So it's uh, February 11th, 2015, and this is the Public Works Advisory Commission? Committee? Public Works Commission. Commission. PWAC. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, we don't have any uh, members of the public here, so we don't need public comment. So first item would be uh, for your approval of the minutes of the January 28th meeting. Oh, and those have been tabled. Because I didn't do them. Okay. <laughs> See, little tables. Where's the urgency? Come on. They were almost approved. Well, we had three snow days. We've just been busy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we had to Under new business, the water supply system asset management plan has been tabled. <gasps> that has been uh, rescheduled for March 25th. Okay. March 25th. Nice. Next, we have a an update on the solid waste budget. Yep. So you have this big report by 17 sheet in front of you here, and we can walk down through it. Um, pretty much, we're right on target with a lot of things that we thought we were going to expend on. Uh, if you look at the O and M, uh, we budgeted two two hundred thirty thousand six hundred. We've gone through uh, ninety two thousand three hundred of that at this point. Um, we're not negative in anything yet. Um, actually, one thing, which is the, uh, excuse me, the uh, uh, contractor services at 339 when we didn't budget anything for it. Um, we've expended a little bit on the capital side. Uh, you can, the $10,000 for the reuse shed, we spent uh, 2322 on that. And we did buy a roll-off container for $5,100. The rest of that money is encumbered for uh, look like enough year or two if we're still doing this that we'll be buying a new roll-off truck. That's why that money's been there. Um, salaries are pretty close to being on target. We had budgeted 210, we're at 98,000 spent expended so far. Uh, going down the employee benefits, the direct costs of the department indirects, we just assumed another 25% were, were taken out because that's the way it was. And I think they sweep it at the beginning of the year. But we're just doing it on a quarterly basis. Um, revenue, uh, we had 30,090 permits issued at $25 this year and 414 at $5. You can see the stickers were above what we anticipated, but we are starting to slow down. The sales are pretty much non existing except for new customers coming in, new people moving to the city that want to use this, uh, the services. We expect that uh, it will probably start in June again when we start selling stickers again for next year. Uh, MRF revenue yeah. is a little bit off. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. how, how does the number of stickers compare with a year ago, two years ago? I believe we were at um, 3,441. was last year's. So it's continuing to decline, but not too much. Right, and last year we had 429 stickers at $5, and this year we have 414 at $5, second vehicle stickers. But um, I expect next quarter that this probably will be probably pretty much level 80,000 again, and because most of our stickers are sold at this point. Uh, MRF revenue is down a little bit than we anticipated. Scrap metals on target. Uh, Amoresco uh, is pretty much where we thought it would be, going towards ten thousand dollars. Bag sales. Uh, we're surprised at bag sales. Uh, according to Dave Valletta, bag sales have been strong, which is a good sign for us. Uh, so we're a little ahead of budget. Um, the blue bins, compost, and grain barrels. We don't make a lot of money on those. Those are basically pass off at cost. That uh, just is programs that we do. Uh, we're collecting food waste fees for uh, families that pet, pet people pick up. And um, the cell tower lease, I was trying to find out what went on with that. I didn't expect to see the $51,000. All I can think is they must have put an extra carrier up there at the landfill because we get 20% of the carrier revenues. So I had to look at that a little bit further, why it's 50000 instead of, I anticipate, about 34000 well, How much potential is there for more carriers? I think they can put up to six carriers on, on that particular tower. 
and historically they've had four carriers. So I need to look at that. Well, they might be able to assemble the tower taller and, and get more. I don't know. I have no idea. Right, right now it's 199 feet, which I think is, I see the ordinance as high as you can go. It's as high as you can go without having a blinking light on it, I think, right? Mm -hmm. the is that it? I think it is. Yeah. I think the driver was to keep it yeah. under the it, the height that you had to have a light on it. So, bottom line, we're still ahead of the game by about thirty, thirty-three thousand dollars and change. So we're, we're we're in the black still. I'm not guarantee that next quarter that we're going to be, but we seem to be holding our own so far. And we have. A surplus we can work against. That's a four hundred thousand or something. What's we have certified free cash, which I believe the solid waste enterprise fund is two point two million. Yeah, but what was the? Um, we were we were anticipating a loss of a hundred uh, hundred twenty four thousand dollars. Yeah, and we were comparing that to so two point four million. We could go for years and years at that rate of loss? No, not necessarily because we have to do another financial assurance mechanism this summer for the for the landfill closure. And with that, there's going to be updates to it that will probably take a good chunk of money out of that. I thought there's less than a half a million dollars of really available free cash or, you know, available money. We have the post-closure care, and I, I don't know if those numbers off the top of my head. That money set aside, but when we update it this summer, we're going to have to look at decommissioning the flare that's out there, mm -hmm. which is going to cost some dollar value. Is it two hundred thousand? Is it three hundred thousand? Or is it hundred? That I don't know. So that will take some money out of that free cash also when we update that. It's probably a million bucks in that time. Okay. At least. We're going to decommission the flare. At some point, we just spent a little of money to within a, make it fancy. At some point, within a short, sounds like within a few years. I think probably the next ten years. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Is that because Amoresco is using enough gas that there isn't that much left to flare off? The generation rate is going to decline over the years to a point where a flare won't be able to support it without additional fuel from somewhere, propane or some other means. At some point, Amoresco won't run run their engines with the de decline. So the typical gas curve is 12 to 15, 18 years. <clears throat> so, just out of curiosity, what's the, what's your, what do you, what are your thoughts moving forward? Do we just? I'm recommending to the mayor that we move the transfer station budgets into the general fund. So they don't rely on solid waste uh, funds and the enterprise fund again. Where that money goes to, the enterprise fund, the, the free cash that's left at the end of the day, I'm not sure right now, but the idea is that this is you know, something that could be absorbed in the general fund. It's not a huge budget. And um, why should the enterprise fund keep losing money? Uh, when I met with him the other day with Dave, Dave Letta, he said, well, we can just raise the sticker rates up. I said, well, Start losing our customers, so it's a catch it, twenty-two. It's, it seems like there's some gr there must be some grander purpose or use for a million dollars than just grinding it away. We could put an addition on this building, for example. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I'm thinking solar a solar field. That would cost you nothing. If you did it, that would be item four. And is, is that, all right, well, I'll, all right, well, I'll hold my questions. All right, so any feedback on this questions? No, I think it's good news. Yeah, it's, it's surprisingly, okay. yeah. That, that pesky cell tower. Yes. It affects the good. Um, thank you. Next comments from the Commission on Proposed it's funny to see that. I'm thinking, what commission? 
uh, comments from our commission on the proposed ordinance for um, environment, environmental protections and solid waste reduction. We've got the something here from Jesse Adams. So this was sent down from the ordinance committee to me to and asked for the Public Works Commission to review and comment on it. Uh, the last time this was around, this also included a styrofoam ban. That is gone now. It's strictly a thin film bag ban is what this is addressing at this point. So do you want to study this and provide some comments back to me? Next time? I, yeah. I can get them to the uh, ordinance committee then. And why did they um, do away with the styrofoam ban? They're looking to implement it down the road further. They mm -hmm. think it's a bigger project to take on than this. Okay. That's my understanding. All right. So the They're not abandoning the idea. Use. They're just delaying it. Now you said thin film bag, is that the same as a single use plastic bag? It is. Um, they made it consistent with the California law. Yeah, there's some. Yeah, it says there's definition on page two of the thin film, single use bag, so I guess it is a single use bag. Mm -hmm. Well, they're really thin. Yeah, they're very thin. They're very thin, 1.5 mil? Yeah. Or less. So if you can review it and get your comments back, I appreciate it. Can we just discuss it at the next meeting? Sure. We'll put it on as an agenda item under old business. What is our next meeting? Okay, we'll have a storm. Oh, you're going to be, you're not, you're I not here. I won't be here. Pat's not here. Pat's no. not here. I don't think, is Mike, did he say he was going to be out there? I don't remember. I thought it was the February meetings he was missing. Yes. Yeah, 11th and 25th, right? So we're down three. I don't know about NJ. I think they did, I think they all responded back saying a postponement is a good idea, and I think they said that whatever the March date March, was, that worked yeah, better than, I think NJ said that, I think Pat said that, I think Mike said that. For the water supply discussion. Yes. Yeah. So, but it doesn't mean that we still won't have a quorum for. Well, I know Pat Goggin said the next two meetings. Today yeah, in he's not here in February. Yeah. And Mike isn't. I don't remember what Mike said. So, can you send us an electronic copy of this so that yeah. Mike and MJ and yep. Pat can all? Can we wait that long? Yep. Or do you need some? They didn't tell me a time frame when they gave this to me this past week, so I can I can inquire about that. Okay. I like it. I'm in favor of it. Uh, okay. Solar vo photo photovoltaic systems at Glendale Road. So the city, through Central Services, through a state contract, has hired Beacon LLC. Woman named Beth Greenblatt, who's the managing director, uh, for a contract value of not to exceed $12,500 to provide a request for proposals to put up a three megawatt solar facility at the landfill, the cap landfill. Um, Dave Valletta and myself, Central Services, we're all reviewing this request for proposal right now. Basically, in it, so there's uh, procurement support, vendor selection, financial modeling. Then in negotiations and public meeting presentations that Beacon will be providing the city. Um, they do have experience in uh, cap landfills. Um, they gave us a uh, project experience list. There's six or seven landfills, uh, solar here, along with um, schools and public other public buildings they've done in the past. Um, so basically, it's moving forward finally, which is great. Um, we're unsure about the Fedora parcel, what we're going to do with that at this point. Uh, in the RP, we're discussing using it as an optimization project. Um, it's flat land, it's open. Um, it's something, I guess it would be priced differently. It had a dis different structure to it because it's not a brownfield. It isn't a landfill. There's different SRECs that come in for mm -hmm. building a landfill versus virgin land. So. Uh, they're looking at that. Um, when I met with the mayor the other day, he was going to have a conversation with the two councilors at large and, and Councilor Barge from the ward um, about putting together a public meeting out there. 
for this for the neighborhood. So we're preparing to move forward with doing something hopefully this year out there. How big is three megawatts? Is that in houses or acres? Uh, no, no, no. In terms of five thousand oh, houses use? or two thousand uh, or four hundred or well, it's I don't know if any sense of well, I got some numbers for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, uh, an average American single-family home uses around 10 to 11,000 kWh per year. Okay. A megawatt yeah. generating a thousand hours a year, which is roughly what you're going to get, maybe a little bit more if, it's, if there's no shading at all. So you'll get a um, thousand. Um, you get a hundred. Oh, so now. 10 so 10 kW 10 kW times a so hundred. You're gonna, Hundred. Uh, uh, one megawatt a generating power is a say a thousand hours, so it's it's a hundred thousand megawatt hours. So if a house is using ten thousand kilowatt hours, no, it's a hundred thousand kilowatt hours, not a hundred thousand megawatt hours. Jesus, hundred thousand kilowatt hours. So it's ten houses. So three megawatts would do thirty houses. Does that sound right? Thirty houses. Yeah. yeah. Does it sound right? Because the Must be a Amoroso facility, I think, is a 0.8 megawatt facility. If I recall right, that was like four or five hundred homes that would power. So that's, yeah, but that's, <clears throat> so that thing runs how many hours a year? That's the difference. It's how many kilowatt hours it puts out. <coughs> so <laughs> solar is only going to put out a thousand to 1200 hours of whatever the nameplate is. So you're starting with a generating capacity of one megawatt, but it's only for a thousand hours. Like cogen, that's eight thousand hours. So they're looking, if I recall right, um, I think it's about eleven usable acres that they're looking to use on top of the landfill. Uh, there's got to be a limit to what they can push off the site based on transmission lines. Though I would think that would be the limiting factor. Is that sound right? There are some other limiting factors. I did yeah. take a look at the draft RFP, and I'm a little concerned about the number that of three that's being used because I think. And I, I talked to, uh, to David in the letter about this, but I think the number three came from the Smith College report, and it didn't. I think the number should come from the developers that are proposing it once they right. look at the right. site to figure out what they can fit on there. The other thing is, we have a lot of underlying un underground gas header lines and other things that I don't want any PV. Um, I don't right. want any. I don't. I don't want anything on those gas header systems because they will cause them to sink and they right. can clog with condensate. Right. So. I asked David about preparing a plan that showed where all these underground lines are, and then they can look at the geometry of the of the site, and then have the developers tell us how many panels they think they can get on there, and what the actual production rate would be. Right. You might use the three as a number to look at an apples to apples comparison of financial potential financial payback, but I was a little uncomfortable with just using three because I don't think it's based on anything that's real. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, well, hopefully it'll be around three, but at this point, knowing where that number came from, I'm like, I mean, the number might not be three. So one that we did at Smith is a half a megawatt, and it takes up uh, about an acre. And it, it has some issues with, it's on a roof, so there's roof trains and there's some um, exhaust fans, so it's not, not the whole acre. But it's, the footprint of the thing is about an acre with some holes in it. And we have how, how many acres? Twenty? We have roughly at the five percent grade about ten or eleven acres up on top. Less roadways, so things like that. If you didn't have anything roadways. else in the way, then that would be five megawatts. So three something mm -hmm. might be. That'd be pretty cool if it's hundreds and hundreds of houses. So, anyways, we'll update you as things move along, but we've started. Yeah. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're all LED now. No, I'm all LED, but I'm also all gas. I'm also don't air condition. I paid the hundred and fifteen dollars for the electrical cost the last year. For the whole year? Mm -hmm. Good job. We paid oh. a lot more than that. Solar. Using solar. Oh, I've never noticed that. Hmm. Um, okay. Well, uh, anything else on that? No. Cool. And was it always the intention that the um, city's energy, city's uh, 
No, it doesn't say who it is. But that other agency developed it? Central Services. Central Services? Yeah. It's, it's just too much for our staff to take on at this point. Yeah. And Chris Mason works out of Central Services. He's the Energy and Sustainability Officer for the city. Okay. Um, reserve for topics that Chair did not reasonably anticipate would be discussed. I have nothing on that. Um, should I mention I'm going to resign here? Sure. So it's on. So oh. it's my intention to resign. You and John Stewart. Uh, my. Oh, I'm so sad over that. Yeah. Not so much me, but John Stewart. You too. Yeah. yeah. Both um, of you. It's my my 19th anniversary is right around now. And uh, this seems like a nice inflection point. There's some changes. It's a good time to step aside. I'm real pleased about the storm water. I think we did a nice job on private ways. I took about 18 of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. We've been working on it the whole time. Uh, so um, I was thinking maybe I'd come to the next meeting just long enough for to get the uh, coffee. A vote for who's going to take over, who the chair is going to be. Well, and, it's got to uh, be a campaign first. I know. Well, that gives you a couple <laughs> weeks. You can all kind of get going. Uh, and I'll send a letter out to everybody. Well, and, and we have to also know if there's going to be another person on the committee, too. On the commission, too. Mm. Well, I'll, 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 I'll tell David now. I'm I want to say it here first. That, but I, you have accomplished a lot of good things, so. We have. It's it's a we. There's no there's no I in team. <laughs> there's a me in team, but there's no I in the team. Um, now it's been a lot of fun. This has been great. I'm going to learn the trumpet. I'm going to play in the community band. Oh, cool. And. Uh, have you ever played an instrument? Clarinet. Oh. Different. I, you know, I don't Can I'm, you I'm, play loud enough to hear yeah. from? Just about. The trumpet Davis. is unbelievably loud. No. In from, a house. No, not Turks and Caicos. Uh, <coughs> oh, from Vieques. From Vieques. Probably not. <laughs> but, I'll, but, but there are no windows in Vieques, so I'm sure I'll play loud enough to pester our neighbors. <laughs> so, Terry, I appreciate all the help that you've given me and the department over the years. Thank you. You're sure welcome. It's been a lot of fun. Or it's, it, it has. It's actually it's been, been a lot of work, too. Yeah, yeah but it's been satisfying, I, th I think. I have no complaints. Um, okay, well, that's. Although I did anticipate I would be making that, so it's not actually unanticipated. Did not reasonably anticipate. No, I knew I was going to say this. <laughs> uh, discussion of the role of the commission. So this came up at the last meeting um, from Roe and. I met with the mayor. Actually, I didn't meet with the mayor. I talked to Lynn about this. And Lynn told me to read the administrative code from the mayor. And it's very clear what they're expecting out of the Public Works Commission, which is basically everything that you were doing before except without voting. Yeah. Assistant mm -hmm. department with policies, long-range planning, infrastructure management, um, capital budgets, and so on and so forth. So you just don't have the, the vote to set rates, sign contracts like you used to. Mm -hmm. They don't see that change. The question specifically, if I recall correctly, was about the initiative of the commission. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That seemed to be an important question. Mm -hmm. Well, so what they're saying in a way is that that's an internal discussion between staff and commission in terms of initiation. One of the good things we were concerned about, just not that we care anymore. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's academic, but go ahead. It was just um, we may have certain questions about how to do things, but are we going to ask staff to do it given that they have a lot of responsibility? So how much initiation should we take through questions? Well, I, I talked to the mayor back when we first, he and I first talked about this, mm -hmm. and and he he said we should just go for it, whatever we think. I mean, in, in his mind, the um, commission 
should get involved as much as we ever have in, in the, the planning and the details. So he, he, he was hoping that the, the just be a seamless transition. Mm -hmm. They take away the the fussiness of signing the contracts, and he was hoping the rest of it would re continue unchanged. Um, I don't see that's entirely possible, but mm -hmm. he. But there's nothing about it that, in his mind, limited mm -hmm. the, the the mandate of the commission to busy itself in the affairs of public works. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. That's it. Gary, anything you think of? No, uh, just, you know, the snow recently has obviously been a big deal, and uh, I think that Seems to me anyway that you've done fine. In fact, I was really surprised to see that the snow was already removed from downtown before the last storm. I don't know what it looks like right yeah. now, but um, I bet you guys have worked a lot of nights. Staff has been working extremely hard, some long hours. Um, last weekend, or the week before, was a 32-hour event. This one was almost a 40-hour event for staff. Jeez. It's uh, draining on them. They saw the opportunity in the window to pick downtown and clear it out, and they, they took it and did it. We're fortunate to have a snow dump on King Street again this year. I think mm -hmm. it will be well used. Mm -hmm. They're talking... We don't more. pay for that, right? We do not. Yeah, they, I know you read the thank you letter or send yeah. the yeah. thank you letter around. So. Yeah, and Mr. Lee has been very kind to the city. Mm -hmm. So up at um, the Big Y Shopping Center, they've got a, a big backhoe up Excavator. on top yeah. and he's just like piling up under it and then climbing yeah. up yeah. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that I could just see it starting to melt in the whole thing yeah they did it last year it yeah. up there. I didn't <coughs> see it during the winter but it was there at the end of the winter when there was just well it's up on top of, of the mountain this big yeah. excavator up right. on the top oh yeah it's big <laughs> yeah I don't suppose we'll be getting a, m a melter since we have all this free space. I don't space. think we want to own a melter, not with the cost <laughs> of running it. No, no. So uh, boss, the one Boston has will do... 25 trucks an hour? And the, 400 the, tons or something? Yeah, 10 wheel, you know, the big... Yeah. What do they do with the water? There would be Put it in the sewer system. In the sewer, not not in the storm I don't sewer. believe it goes in the storm drains. It goes in the same Why place. Why not? Oh, it has to be treated? Sand, salt. Uh -huh. okay. oh. I don't think they dump it to a storm drain. I could be wrong. Well, uh, Logan, my fa my grandmother, my, was my father in law, was the port engineer for the port authority in his particular <laughs> the airport. And they have snow melting pits there that drain right into the harbor. And there, were, there was a picture on the uh, television that showed water going into a catch basin. Okay. So, so that was just one. It didn't comment, it just pictured it. I don't have a, I don't, I don't know. It's just that from the beginning. They got permission to dump in waterways. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. That, that, that was the yeah. newest thing that I remember hearing. Because of it surprised me. But I think that's what we used to do. See, BJ, you're not just office running the office. You're keeping up on all things public she works. Knows. <laughs> she knows what's going on. I was horrified. Yeah. Uh, well, I like on the radio how they say the city of Boston has run out of space in their snow farms. You see, they don't call them dumps now. <laughs> <laughs> snow farms. It must be growing snow. I think yeah. we could learn something now. Right. It sounds okay. so clean. It does. <laughs> no, they, they've, and green. They've worked in, we've got a Republican <laughs> governor now, they're working on the language. <laughs> Jim? Anything? Oh, are you done? Not done. Um, staff has been working on rules and regulations for the water division doing an internal review, hopefully next week or two. These will come to the commission for a review and comment also, where we adopt them. Yeah. When I was about 40, I started taking trumpet lessons. Ten and a half years ago. And one of, That's right. And one of my goals was to play with the Florence Community Band. So 
I wish you well. And How'd that go? I, I wish you well in achieving a goal that I never achieved. So. You know, the reason I'm doing the trumpet is um, when my daughter was at the high school, the teacher, the band teacher at the high school suggested she talk to Walter Chestnut, who was a very famous trumpet professor over at UMass. Remember the guy who has had a problem in his neck and he wound up in a wheelchair? Uh, and, but he, they had a special way he could play a trumpet, the herald trumpet for the graduation. I don't know if you, that sticks in your mind. Anyway, Walter Chestnut talked to our daughter, offered to take her on as a student, but he wanted, he had pretty rigorous, he was willing to take her on if she was willing to practice at least an hour a day, blah, blah, blah. And she decided it was too much commitment. But anyway, he remembered that we wanted a trumpet, so he called us, he called me to say that someone's coming up from New York City with a trunk full of instruments he thought that, that this guy thought the students might be interested in. So I went over and I bought a trumpet with Walter Chestnut helping me pick the one. It turns out it's like a Boston Symphony Orchestra level trumpet. Wow. So you could sound pretty good. Well, no, I don't. It turns out I don't. But it's certainly not for a lack of a good instrument. So I've got a great trumpet. And even though I wasn't thinking trumpet, I was thinking maybe saxophone, I don't know, something. Um, I've got this great trumpet. I thought, well, I'll try it. Trumpet sounds great, and it's perfect for that band. So yeah. It's good. And my, and really my wife, being a flutist, sits in front of the trumpet and says, you sit there really loud! <laughs> <laughs> right behind her head. Oh, that's cool. What's the name of the brass band? The continuing? Expandable. Expandable. Mm. Yeah, I'm not ready for that. Well, Those guys are actually pretty good. So how far did you get? Well, I took lessons for a couple of years. It and you never felt like you could be like third trumpet? It was It was hard to find the time. I was doing it before I was here. Uh -huh. So, you know, I had a more, not that this job isn't rigorous, but I had a more rigorous job. And so it was hard to find the time. Yeah. Huh. Are you going to quit your day job? And I had never played an instrument like you, so I had to start at the very beginning. Oh, I, I'm having a hard time getting my fingers to just, you There's know, only three. There's only three. <laughs> <laughs> the clarinet, there was at least, like... Oh, yeah, the clarinet a lot, but, um... It's a combination of mouth and fingers. It's... Mm -hmm. And then you're tapping with your left foot, and there's a lot going on. <laughs> <coughs> That's interesting. So two years, and that you didn't feel... You felt like you, so you felt like you could have been like third trumpet or something. Oh, I felt like I could have done it. Yeah. 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 No, seriously. No, yeah. It, it, I mean, I had talked to Priscilla, Priscilla Ross. Is the, yeah. You know, I know Priscilla. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll have to get together. You still got it, I'm sure. I don't. Oh. There's another story. Oh. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to see in the back of the little trailer there and the parades and everything over there. That'd be awesome. Oh man, okay, I gotta think about that. You need a new <laughs> suit. Uh, white shirt, black pants. I think I got that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> PJ, all set? I am. David? All set. set. All set? Set. Great. Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Oh, Thank you're you. welcome. <laughs>